James Madison was a very small man. He weighed only 100 pounds, and any man would laugh at the very sight of him. <laughs> For some odd reason, people called him Jemmy. However, in 1808, he was elected to be president. And this is where our story begins. Naturally, Madison supported the Federalists, although over time he seemed to ally himself with Thomas Jefferson and the Democratic Republicans due to the fact that he was shunned because he didn't exactly see eye to eye with the Federalists. Madison served Jefferson faithfully for eight years and the election was not even close. Madison immediately got to work and initiated Macon's Bill No. 2 in which he lifted all embargoes with Britain and France in hopes that he could still make peace with them. So how does it feel to be present now? What were you trying to do during office? To be honest, it feels awesome knowing nobody else can challenge me. Like people like you won't be able to ever reach this office. But I would try, try to help the American people in the best way I can. However, Madison sowed the seeds of war that would come back to haunt him later with the Non-Intercourse Act of 1809. It was meant to damage the economies of Britain and France while strengthening the National Assembly of America. However, it turned around and actually affected America's economy more. <laughs> In three years, these seeds of war will sprout and I will be happy. Eventually, the British got really mad at America, so they traded with France, of whom they are still at war with. The British then wanted to impress upon the Americans that they should be joining in the British Navy, as they were British to begin with. And then, the British felt the need to even attack an American vessel. Still, America wanted more. They wanted the Northwest Territories, but the British still supported indigenous tribes there. This angered the Americans into one uh. war. Those who wanted war were called war hawks. We're here live at Wall Street. The American economy has grown negative 500 percent, and the French and British are going down, 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 as seen here. Sir, do you have any idea why this is happening? I don't know. Ask the EU who made the bill. Mr. President, is it true that you made this bill that is destroying our economy and that of Britain? Yeah. So what? Yeah. And there you have it, folks. It seems we have elected an idiot of a president. <laughs> During the midterm election of 1810, many war hawks were elected into office. They wanted war with Britain so much that it actually went through. And now we are here. We are currently getting the midterm election results of 1810 here live. Wait, what's this? The idiots have lost Congress? Yes, it has been confirmed. The war hawks have taken Congress. What is going to be your first action as congressman, my good man? We're going to declare war on Britain, yeah! <laughs> This brings us to General William Henry Harrison, serving in the Northwest Territories under General Mad Anthony Wayne. Harrison advanced to captain and commander of Fort Washington, near present-day Cincinnati. President John Adams appointed Harrison secretary of the Northwest Territory in 1798. Two years later, Adams named him governor of the Indian Territory, present-day Indiana and Illinois. Presidents Jefferson and Madison kept him in that position for 12 years. You could say Harrison was an avid diplomat. In fact, he negotiated a deal with the Indians that gave them one penny for every 200 acres of land. Eventually, this man became the general of the army in the War of 1812, also known as Madison's War. Speaking of Indians, we have Tecumseh. This Native American rose to power in 1807 with some religious movement and signed an alliance with the British to end the War of 1812. The U.S. wanted to take over northern and southern Canada because if they somehow managed to do this, British troop movements would have been stopped. But General Hull decided to move 1,000 untrained troops into Canada, so obviously they were forced to retreat at Detroit. However, the army did not learn their lesson and decided to attack back, and once again they were forced back. General Andrew Jackson defeated British troops at New Orleans who were trying to capture territories gained in the Louisiana Purchase. And the battle wasn't even supposed to happen, due to the fact that they could not telephone the news that a treaty had been passed known as the Treaty of Ghent, but the U.S. won the battle anyways. The Treaty of Ghent was signed in Belgium on Christmas Eve, 1814, and somehow both sides lost. Britain agreed to give up the Northwest Territory, and both agreed to help stop the slave trade.
Both America and Britain lost many troops, but 3,000 slaves escaped to Britain illegally, and America argued that that violated the Treaty of Ghent. The British also had to pay $1 million. Although nothing new came of this war, no country lost or gained land, and if anything, the United States got some respect. The United States established a cotton industry domestically, and the War of 1812 was known as the Second War of Independence. Nothing much happened to Britain, and the Canadians would eventually establish a Canadian confederation. General Jackson, why didn't you end the fighting? The Treaty of Ghent was signed a few days before the battle. Well, you see, I had an iPhone, and my mini war game app was on. So when I got the call from James Madison, I did not receive it, and I called my job. Well, I see. But did we win the war? Uh, yes. What was the treaty again? After the war, there is a meeting in Hartford, Connecticut, to discuss the effects of the War of 1812. The delegates drafted proposals for constitutional amendments that would challenge what they saw as President James Madison's military despotism and force him to resign. No! I believe, as Americans, we should win. I mean, like, really, both sides lose? That's pointless. It doesn't settle anything. Uh, and we never win anything international. Like, the World Cup didn't go exactly as planned, and nobody plays football like the real sport. We don't even win basketball anymore. So can we at least win the game where we kill people? This is all we live for. After the war, the Federalist Party was essentially dissolved, and Madison issued the Bonus Bill of 1817 as his last act in office. This bill would deny states the right to internal improvements. Madison left office in 1817 and retired to Montpierre in Virginia. Mr. President, many of the people in this country, including me, believe that you left, th left this country in a condition worse than you entered. What are your comments on this? Not that they matter in a way or shape or form. Uh, well, I believe that has done a great job. I have kept the country together through our second war with Britain and ensured that America remains a free country. And this matters why? 